Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to look at the subreddit r slash entitled parents, where people tell us their stories of crazy mums and dads who think they're entitled just because they have kids. If you're new around here, please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video, but for now let's sit back, relax and enjoy some reddit stories. Entitled mother accuses me of purposely ruining her child's educational career. I taught kindergarten many moons ago. One particularly average student, who every once in a while a behaviour issue, had a challenging mother. Every once in a while, entitled mother would question, with a condescending look, why I was teaching something. Um, it was the mandated curriculum in our city. Overall, not really horrible stuff I couldn't handle, until the moving up ceremony day. Now, this particular student was late almost every day. They had to be in school at 20 past 8 a.m. I gave the kids the benefit of the doubt that if they entered the school on time, it might take them 10 minutes to get to my classroom. If they were late downstairs, they were given a late pass. I kept all late passes in a file. Each time the child came in late, past half past 8, and or had a late pass, I marked her late. I did the same for every child in my class. On the day we have the moving up ceremony, kids tend to leave school for the day right after the ceremony. I handed out the final report card with the total number of days late and absent for the year. Each other report card only had the amount for that quarter, so it shouldn't have been a surprise either. I was in my classroom changing and getting ready to go out for lunch when entitled mother called me. She was upset about the number of latenesses. Over 125 days, we only have 181 days of school in a school year. She started yelling at me that I was wrong. I told her that according to my records, those were the number of absences and I had spoken to her about it at past parent teacher conferences. Then she says, you are putting my child's educational future at risk because you have marked her late. I bit my lip. I don't remember how I was able to politely get her off the phone, but we ended the conversation. I shrug it off. A few minutes later, I get another call. This is from some man claiming to be the family's caseworker, checking up on that student's end year progress. I was not aware that the family had a caseworker, let alone an open case with children's services. We are typically told. I politely told the man that I could not speak to him about anything about my student because I could not confirm his identity. He would have to call the office. He was not happy. I had a bad feeling about that call and that it might be a setup. I later took my teaching assistant out for a traditional end of year lunch as we were on our way to see Entitled Mother. As we were on our way, we see Entitled Mother. She confronts me again. My assistant stood by my side to protect me. My assistant didn't trust the Entitled Mother's physical stance and felt that it shouldn't be a private conversation. I finally tell Entitled Mother that she can go in and speak to administration if she feels what I did was wrong. Later, as I am back in my classroom starting to clean and pack things away for the summer, my assistant principal comes in to ask me about the latenesses. Entitled Mother is downstairs in the office complaining about me. I told her how I came to that particular number. I even gave her the pile of late passes. She leaves and I continue to clean up. Once again, my assistant principal comes back to my room with a huge smile. Apparently, I had miscounted the number of latenesses. They reviewed the late passes and the late book, and I was off by three latenesses. They added the three extra days I missed to her final report card. The next year, I looped up to first grade. We always reconfigured the classes each year, so kids wouldn't stay together year after year. So about half of my kindergarten class would have me for their teacher again. We had already set the classes up for first grade, but due to entitled mother's confrontation outside of school and my assistant being a witness, I asked that that student not be in my class for first grade. Administration agreed. That September, entitled mother showed up in the office after dismissal on the first day, demanding to know why her daughter wasn't in my class. 
I am very glad admin backed me up again. And sadly over the years, I watched that typical kid with behaviours turn into a giant entitled kid with massive behaviour problems. Consistently late. When they first mentioned, oh, they miscounted the late days, I was like, oh no, this entitled mother's gonna think she's better. And then they were like, added three days. I was like, oh, that's just perfect. Lady tried to steal my blood. Okay, I know this sounds insane, but lo and behold, it happened to me. I'll give a little backstory so this makes more sense to people. I'm not sure how it is in other countries or even other states, but I live in Idaho. And at least here, most places won't let you donate blood or plasma if you have an autoimmune disease. I have JRA, which is Juvenile Rheumatoid Arthritis, also known as Juvenile Idiopathic Arthritis. And there's many things that make you eligible to donate blood or plasma. One is the unknown nature of autoimmune diseases and using their blood could affect the person that gets them. Second is most JRA patients are anemic. Third is medicine most autoimmune patients are on. So I've been told many times I can't donate blood or plasma and also bone marrow. So that being told, I normally avoid those like booths set up with all the plasma, blood, etc, donating info and stuff. Because it's a bit of a hassle to explain and it's a bit personal. So I would rather not have my personal illnesses broadcasted to everyone within earshot. Now, this story starts when I was in my first semester at community college. I was like 19, a bit late to go to college, but I have a lot of anxiety, which prevented me from going right after graduating. Due to this, I'm like extra quiet on the campus. I just get in and get out. There's usually a booth or two in the entry area or right outside occasionally. They range from like Costco to banks, just offering you student discounts for stuff. And as per usual, a blood bank slash clinic booth pops up occasionally. Now, my tactic for avoiding getting up in conversation is usually A, walk a completely different route that takes way longer but avoids this one person, or B, walk past while looking down at my phone. Usually people ignore me, but on this fateful day in the fall of a very persistent lady was not going to let me just walk past. I will call her EB for entitled Witch Nugget. She was around my age, maybe a tiny bit older. The conversation is a bit fuzzy as it was a while ago. Me, assessing the situation, seeing that the usual route to avoid is blocked, sighs and tries to walk past quickly. Hey, are you interested in? She starts walking up to me, hearing about blood donation. Me, human interaction, panic, panic. I, uh, um, not really. Her face looked literally offended, mouth slightly agape like a fish. What? How can you say no about learning about something like this? She was already loud to start with, but raised her voice at this, making my social anxiety flare up. W well, I already know about it. My dad donates all the time. If he, she actually drawled the E on this, donates, then why don't you? Me literally considers faking a heart attack or a fake phone call to get out of this. I, I can't. I know I should have like explained more, but I was so panicked by being pounced on by this girl that I just flubbered that out. With that, I just hurried away and out the door. She called after me, but I booked it, seeing my mum's car who would come to pick me up and I hopped in. It ends there, right? Nope, not an entitled parent story without an entitled parent, right? Well, there is one. Like a week or two later, I had semi forgotten about the event with the entitled witch nugget, but I was still wary of booths. I didn't have classes this day, but I needed to get a thing for a math class that I didn't have the money for until now. As luck would have it, my mum and I were babysitting my baby nephew, so he came with me to my college. It wasn't a big deal. My plan was to push his stroller down this path on the river. Some people didn't believe that there was a river near campus, so here's a picture. To the campus. My mum knew what I needed and was going to head in and get it for me. 
since she kindly offered to pay for it for me. No issue, she helped me get my nephew into the stroller, and then we separated. I stayed nearby on the path that was literally right next to the building, just going in a loop. There was an event happening right by the school, with a bunch of, you guessed it, booths. Lo and behold, what was there? A blood bank booth. I didn't see it, I was busy talking to my nephew as I pushed the stroller. Our peaceful walk was quickly interrupted when I heard a voice, the voice of entitled Witch Nugget. That's her, the woman who refuses to donate her blood. I paused, kind of like, WTF, that person is loud. I noticed the event happening and was like, uh, this looks like it'll get loud. They were setting up a stage with stereos, so I turned around to head back to the car. When I turned, I saw her, and immediately I flashed back, like, oh no, it's her. Not just her though, I saw this woman, and calling her a woman is a nice gesture. She looked like a human-sized gremlin with Karen hair. Thinking, naively hopeful, that maybe she wasn't looking at me, I started to walk back. No such luck. The entitled Witch Nugget and Gremlin blocked my path. Gremlin will be referred to as G. Yeah, that's her. The selfish woman I told you about. What? So you're the brag that doesn't think your blood is good enough for strangers. Uh, what? My daughter told me how you refuse to learn about our blood bank. You think you're too good to donate? Me, internally panicking. W what? N no, I told her I can't donate. That's a lie. She's just saying that. This woman actually borderline whined. Now, I was so thrown off at this point that I missed Gremlin saying that entitled witch nugget was her daughter. Stop lying. People like you are going to hell. I can't donate. I have an autoimmune disease. That doesn't stop you from donating. You're a pathological liar. You probably don't even have a disease. At this point, my nephew was getting fussy, and I was panicked. I didn't want to be anywhere near this lady anymore, and didn't want my nephew to start crying. So I attempted to start turning the stroller around, planning to take the long way back. Gremlin was having none of this. She stopped the stroller with her foot before seeming to realize that it was a stroller. You have a baby? Someone as selfish as you shouldn't have a child. I'm used to people thinking he's mine, usually calling me something like a bad teen mom. I live in Idaho, not like a picturesque voice like real Idaho where it's more rural and full of a ton of religious nuts. It's only ever the religious nuts that call me stuff like this when I'm out with my nephew. I just ignore it, don't bother correcting them and leave. In my mind, I try to think of another way to get around them. As I was thinking, this woman reached down towards my nephew with her nasty gremlin hands. I panicked. This was not my baby, and I was not going to let him get hurt. In my panic, I quickly turned the cart away, ended up running over Gremlin's foot that was blocking my cart. She let out the loudest, most overdramatic screech. How dare you assault my mother? At this point, I made the connected that this psycho entitled Witch Nugget was related to the Gremlin. Your mom is insane. I can't donate my blood, so go away. While she stood there doing a mouth movement like a fish on land, like mouth slightly opening and closing, I don't know, fish people will get it maybe, I turned fully to leave. Gremlin grabbed my arm so hard I cried out a little. Again, I have JRA, and she grabbed right near my elbow so it hurt like hell. You will donate your blood, you lying degenerate. She was red in the face, like it looked like she had attempted walking up some stairs, kind of red. At this point, her grip was so tight it was leaving marks. Luckily, her screaming caught the attention of some security guards that were walking past for the event. She was quickly pulled away from me. 
they had to pry her hand off my arm because of how tightly she was holding me. In all the fuss, my nephew started crying, and I didn't know how to calm him. I frantically called my mum, telling her where I was, and she was over there in a flash. I handed her my nephew and blubbered out what happened. After she was dragged away by the security, they asked if I wanted to call the police to press charges. I was scared but said no, not wanting to deal with that. In the end, she and the girl were banned from the college campus and the open area right next to where the event had taken place. She and the daughter were told to leave me alone or else I could charge for harassment. I found out later from the blood bank that they worked at that they fired both of them, having had previous issues with them harassing people. I don't know if this is really an entitled parent story, but I thought it sort of fits, since she felt like I had to donate my blood. I don't know, hope you enjoyed it. I don't understand, why do you think you're entitled to grab onto a random person without permission? If someone says no, just don't do it. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.